สวัสดีครับ Greetings from Bangkok. By the grace of God, I hope that everyone is doing very well. We are all facing COVID-19 pandemic. We pray that there will be vaccines for this disease very, very soon. Praise God for Thailand that we don't have any new case of coronavirus in the country for more than 100 days already. The new cases reported are travelers returning from other countries. Our church now can hold services again with social distancing. However, many people are getting used to attending online instead of physical church services. I hope that when COVID-19 is over, most of you will come back to meet in a physical church at Bethany. Amen. Yes. <laughs> By the way, thanks so much, Pastor Johan, for allowing me to minister to your congregation today. I wish I physically. Could be there with all of you in Singapore. I miss fellowship with all of you. Last time when I visited you, your church, especially Brother Hendrik, Pastor Harun, and others, took a very good care of me and my wife. We truly appreciate you so much. Thanks also for praying for our church building project. Actually, we have started the construction in February early this year, and. Expect to celebrate our Christmas at the new building in this coming December. It is a four-story building with a, a 3,200 seating capacity auditorium. When we started this project, we didn't expect COVID-19, but it happened after the building construction uh, construction just began only one month. How could we raise funds for the project? Where would all the money come from? Would the project have to stop? Wow, that's pretty serious. Praise the Lord for His miraculous provision. The money keeps coming. God poured His blessing upon His people. In spite of COVID-19, God somehow financially blessed our people amazingly. We never stopped the project. We are looking forward to moving into this new building in December. Praise the Lord. Brother and sister, God is with us. He will never leave and forsake us. Amen? He will continue to bless us financially, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. Amen. Can we shout amen together? Amen. Today's message is entitled, Developing a Meaningful Relationship with the Holy Spirit. He to Overcoming the Flesh. Before salvation, before we got saved, we live without the Holy Spirit. All itself dominates our life. At salvation, when we put our trust in Jesus and accept Him as our Lord and Savior, we receive the Spirit into our life. We were born again. God sent the Holy Spirit to dwell within us. Now we have a roommate, the Holy Spirit. However, after salvation, we struggle against the Spirit because we don't learn how to live with Him yet. He wants us to go this way, but we want to go another way. There is a constant fight between self and the Spirit. Have you all experienced that? Initially, yourself or the flesh is so big, so big, and the Holy Spirit is very small. But as we grow in relationship with the Spirit, eventually the Spirit will want the control over our life. We then submit to the Spirit totally. Amen? So the point is, how do we form a relationship with the other person who enters our life at the point of salvation? So again, the title today is Developing a Meaningful Relationship with the Holy Spirit Key to Overcoming the Flesh. You have to understand that this is a relationship with a new person who came into your life. Romans 8 verse 16 says, The Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. 
In another word, the Holy Spirit communicates with us, our spirit, spirit to spirit, that we are born again, which means the Holy Spirit communicates. In this context, He communicates with our spirit. But so many times, people don't understand this part of the Christian life. Many Christians can relate with God, the Father, and Jesus, but they don't even have a relationship with the Holy Spirit because they don't know how to have one. And they have not really thought about that. Am I supposed to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit? I know that we need to have a relationship with God and with Jesus Christ. Am I supposed to have fellowship with the Holy Spirit? This is a very important question. The Bible actually gives us an answer. In 2 Corinthians 13 verse 14 says, The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion, the communion comes from koinonia, which means fellowship, association, close relationship, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen? Do you mean we need to have a communion close relationship or fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Yes. Be with you all. Not just some, but everybody. All. Therefore, we have to understand that the Holy Spirit does not come just to sit there, but He not only wants to transform our life into the image of Christ, but He wants a personal relationship with us as well. He wants to fellowship with us. But how does that work? For example, on one Sunday, as I was driving to my church, the Spirit said to me, Anupap, somebody needs a special deliverance today. That is a direct alert from the Spirit. Fellowship isn't you are talking with a brick wall. You are talking to another person who has mind, will, and emotions. You cannot have koinonia with trees. You can only have koinonia with another person. The Holy Spirit was alerting me that I need to partner with Him because somebody needs special attention. There are many people at church on Sunday I didn't know who needs special deliverance. It seemed to me that everybody needs special attention. But I know that the Spirit would alert me. However, the service was over. Nothing happened. It seemed to me that everything just, just like normal. There seemed to be no special case at all on that particular Sunday. So then I talked to the Spirit. I'm ready to go home. Nobody seemed to need uh, special attention. But he said, No, Anupab, you don't go home. You wait. Okay, I wait. I was waiting at the church after the service for another two hours. Then I was told that a couple would like to see me. I said, Okay, let, let them come in. I greet the man. Then his girlfriend came in. I also say hi to her, but she gave me a strange and really cold look. The spirit whispered to me, this is the one. <laughs> so I asked the man who brought her, what happened? And he told me, this is my girlfriend. She is a beautiful lady. She won many beauty contests in Thailand. As a result, many men would like to date her. But somehow, some of them used a witchcraft power over her. She was controlled by this power for more than one whole year. I brought her to all over the places in Thailand in order to get help. But no one seemed to be able to help her at all. Until one day, my friend asked me to bring her to Liberty Church. So here we come. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know what happened? I just simply cast the demon out in the name of Jesus. She was totally set free from the demonic power. Then 
I share the gospel to her and she got saved. Praise God on that day. But my point isn't me casting the demon out of her in the name of Jesus. My point is the fellowship with the person who is all-knowing. The Spirit of God is all-powerful. He is God and He wants to partner with us in our life and lead us on divine mission, just like that. I was sent on that mission. Wouldn't I? And you're supposed to be sent on missions, actually many missions as well. That's what the Spirit wants. And if you don't have that relationship, it's because you are not doing what the Bible says you're supposed to do. Because if you do, then re relationship really grows. It's amazing. So, we must develop a meaningful relationship with the Holy Spirit. Amen? I want to know, when I read the Bible, what does the Bible command me to do with my new friend, the Holy Spirit, that dwells in me? What does He want of me? Besides He wants the relationship, does He give me any boundaries? I found that there are four commands. Maybe there are more, but those are the four that I found. Two of them are saying, do this. And two of them says, whatever you do, don't do this. So let us take a look at them. The first one is in Galatians 5 verse 16. And it says, I say then, Walk. I say then, walk. Walk. The Bible command us, the Bible command me to do something, to walk. It means what? All the activities or all the parts of my life, I suppose to walk. Walk what? Walk in the spirit. And you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So, number one, I overcome the flesh by walking in the Spirit. Brother and sister, if you want to overcome your flesh, if you want to uh, uh, go on from this level to the next level of your Christian life, you need to overcome the flesh by walking in the Spirit. Walking daily in the Spirit. What does it mean? Being with Him, being mindful of Him, listening, talking, communing, having fellowship, walking. I am commanded to do that. If I stop doing that and start avoiding that relationship is like any other relationship, although He doesn't leave because He seals, he seals us until the day of salvation, uh, redemption. Yet, if you don't have two-way relationship, he tried to have one with you and you close him off. In time, you won't even know that he is there because you can put him down. So, what are the things that I am not supposed to do? Read Ephesians. So first, you walk. The, 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 the Bible commands us to walk in the Spirit. But then what the Bible asks us not supposed to do. Read Ephesians chapter 4 verse 13, uh, 30. And do not grieve the Spirit. This is not, this also a command. Grief means to cause pain, to make sorry, to distress or hurt the feeling of other person. Brother and sister, do you, do you realize that the Bible commands us not to hurt the Holy Spirit of God? God permits us to hurt Him. The Holy Spirit permits us to hurt Him because once He enters us, He can't leave. He is not permitted to live until the day of salvation. 
So how do you grieve the Holy Spirit? Well, when he say, don't commit this sin, and we do resisting him, it causes him pain. And if we continue to live in such a way that he has to convict us not to do, if we continue to do, he get more and more and more grief, just like other relationships. So, if you mistreat your spouse, you don't care about what their feelings are, harsh and abusive, angry, definitely your relationship will sour, isn't it? Even though the Spirit doesn't leave us, He withdraws from us. So, we don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. So, I overcome the flesh by not grieving the Spirit. I overcome the flesh by not grieving the Spirit. And I hope all of us, we will not grieve the Holy Spirit. Some of us have been grieving Him for a long time. You harden your heart even though He is trying to speak to you. You don't want to listen to Him. You turn your heart down. You put Him in a corner. You can always bring Him back into your relationship by apologizing, confessing your sins, asking forgiveness of the person of the Spirit. I'm sorry for grieving you. He gets hurt just like I hurt. I get hurt and you get hurt. He is a person, not power or a thing. He is a real person. So first, we need to walk. Walking is a command. And then we don't grieve the Spirit. Another command. Do not quench the Spirit. Do not quench the Spirit. This is the third command. What does quench mean? It's just like you quench the fire. It means to extinguish, put out a fire, to suppress, to stifle, or to resist. How does this difference from, from grieving? Actually, grieving has to do with sin. Quenching is when the Holy Spirit is leading you and you don't want to do it and don't do it. Or when the Spirit was leading me, saying, someone needs a special deliverance. If I say, oh, I don't want to do, I don't want to wait, I'm too busy now. And I left my office. That is called quenching. The Spirit is a person. You don't put Him out because He can't be put out, but He can withdraw. If you can if you continue to quench, he knocks in your life many times and he says, deliver this person, call your mom, give to the church, visit new believers, invite your friend to the church, share some link to your father, but you don't want to do. That's called quenching. So all of us may experience that. We can't quench the Spirit, many times. And if you continue to quench and grieve the Spirit, what kind of relationship you will have? It won't be supernatural. You will not be sent on divine mission. You will not hear the Lord communicating with you. You will not have a conversation with Him. Why not? You have hurt Him so many times. You put Him down so many times. Is that the way you want to live? Actually, it's your choice. It's not what I want it to. It's not what I want it for you. So, I overcome the flesh by not quenching the spirit. So, you walk in the spirit. You not grieve the spirit. You don't quench the spirit. Now the next one is the surprising one. Very important. And do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled 
with the Spirit. Be filled is present passive imperative. I am commanded to do something, but I cannot do it. I can't stand right here and be filled with the Spirit. I have to permit the Holy Spirit to fill me. Allow yourself to continue to be filled by not quenching, not grieving, and by walking. If you obey those things, and if you continue to pursue the Spirit, you will be filled with the Spirit. Your relationship with the Spirit is like a pipe between Him and us. At the beginning, it is just a little pipe and the power of the Spirit is just a little bit. But when relationship grows, the size of the pipe grows. If you don't wash out, sin will accumulate on the inside of that pipe and slow the movement of the Spirit in your life. When you find that, clean it out. But you can, by your relationship, become mighty in the Spirit. It is not your Spirit. It is the might of the Spirit of God in you, working through your Spirit and your soul because the relationship with you is so strong. And if, you, and if your relationship with the Spirit grows, the speed or the power of the Spirit working becomes stronger and stronger. This is what the Spirit wants. It's not that we have to convince the Spirit to use us more. He always wants to partner with us. We are His temple. We are not our own. So we must allow or permit yourself. We must constantly and continuously be in the process of allowing the Spirit to work through you, work in you. Do what He asks. Don't live in sin. If you live in sin, confess and return back and then continue pursuing. Say to the, say to the Spirit, Lord, whatever you need to do in my life to use me more, the answer is yes. Yes. I will do whatever you ask. Just give me more of you. Actually, the power of the Spirit is depending upon the big word. You know what? O B E Y. Obey. So, I overcome the flesh by being filled with the Spirit. So we need to allow the Spirit to work through you, to work in you all the times. So we need to develop a meaningful relationship with the Holy Spirit. This is the key to overcome the flesh. The Bible commands us to do four things. To walk, don't grieve, don't quench, and be filled with the Holy Spirit. However, there's another point which is very important as well. We need to reject the flesh and choices the Spirit during His test. So what is the Spirit trying to do, actually? He's trying to break our dependence on ourselves or the flesh. He's trying to cause us over and over again to choose Him over yourself. He sent tests. A test is something that the Spirit does to us that we don't want to do. It's not a test if you want to do it. He gave us a test and said, okay, I want you to do this. And you don't want to do that. But he sent this test to you. The question is, who is going to get your choice? Is it yourself and your want? Or is it just the Spirit and His desire? At the early stage of your salvation is self. Self is right here, and then the Spirit is right here. Then it grows and gets close to each other, and a lot of struggle. Then eventually, if you want, you can keep growing. So the Spirit is not just a little bit, but more and more and more. 
and you cannot remember the kind of person you used to be anymore, just think of that. Because that's the way it meant to be. Your old personality is gone. You got love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, gentleness, meekness, goodness. So obvious, so clear in your life. That's the new you. That's what the Spirit came to do. It's wonderful. What does He want? He wants to prepare you to break free of the flesh and go on to the next level in your Christian walk. Because unless you pass enough of His test, you are not going to break into the new level. So, just think about this. Initially, we mostly disobey. We mostly disobey. Then, just imagine this. When we, when we first started our Christian life, we mostly disobey. Then, we grow. And occasionally, we fail. But ultimately, if you are starting to pass more and more, and more and more tests. Then we have a tipping point. More and more, you are choosing the Spirit all the time. When the tipping point happens, then that when uh, you are ready for the next level, and I hope that it will happen to you. How do you, how do, you do with this test that He sends you? When He asks you to do something that you don't want to do, you choose to do anyway. I'm choosing the Spirit. You have the right to choose yourself or the Spirit. When you live in the area of sin, maybe you commit it once or several times, He keeps convicting you and you keep fighting with Him. But today, make a decision to break it, to end it. Stop grieving Him. Apologize to the Spirit the more you relate to the Spirit as a person, the more relationship is going to grow. A point is, every time you get one of these tests, if you want to go on, break free from the Spirit, you've got to pass the test. The book of Psalm verse, uh, chapter 7, verse 9 says, For the righteous God tests the hearts and minds. See, he sent us test. Will you do what he, I say? Stop doing this and do that. If you obey, you pass the test. Jeremiah 17 verse 10, very famous verse, says, I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the mind even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doing. So he tests you because he wants you to pass. If you, choose to, uh, if you choose the Spirit more and more, then you grow. Then you are ready. You hit the tipping point and you are ready for the next level. I hope that we all can go to the next level. We can be more productive. We can be more fruitful. We can, we can serve the Lord and we can see more fruit. If you find yourself not having relationship with the Spirit like you used to be in the early days, all He is waiting for is an apology and a new beginning. So, we have to reject the flesh and choices and choose the Spirit during His tests. Amen? We have to reject the flesh and choose the Spirit during his test. And I pray that all of us will pass the test. So today, walk in the Spirit and pass his test. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit. So some of us have been convicted today you realize that I don't have that much relationship with the Holy Spirit on a regular basis. I have been quenching, grieving. I am not walking in the Spirit and I am not filled. Maybe that is why you are here. You are finding out the answer. These are the answer. 
There isn't another answer. This is an ongoing relationship. You've got to understand that. It's like a husband who keeps treating his wife in a hard way and one day goes and buys 1,000 red roses and comes home and apologizes and gives this to her. She's so overwhelmed and feels love. And the next day, he is unkind and ungracious to her. That was an event. She is not looking for an event. He, the Spirit of God, is not looking for an event as well. He is looking for the present active imperative. Keep on walking, keep on, quen uh, keep on not quenching, keep on not grieving, and keep on allowing yourself to be filled. So you have four commands. Walk, don't grieve, don't quench, be filled, and pass his test. So today, will you form a meaningful relationship with the Holy Spirit who is dwelling with you? Will you stop having confidence in your flesh and starting passing those tests? If you want to overcome the flesh, you have to develop a meaningful relationship with the Holy Spirit. You need to walk, don't grieve, don't quench, and be filled and pass his test. Why don't you make up your mind right now to pass any test the Spirit gives to you between now and next week and see what happens. How many people want to do this? Tell yourself, I will pass every test this week. I love a story I heard from a pastor. A lady mentions that her best girlfriend was moving. And she said, I was helping her move. I could not make up my mind what to give her for housewarming present. In the morning, as I was sitting on my couch, sipping my tea, I was looking at my favorite thing in the house. There was an oil painting on the wall. I love that picture so much. I watch it every day when I have my morning tea. And all of a sudden, the Lord said, why don't you give her your favorite picture? Give her that picture. I will buy her a new picture, but I'm not going to give her that picture that is my favorite picture in my whole life. But later, she remembered the teaching that the Spirit will test you in something that you don't want to do that would not bother anybody else, but it bothered me a lot. Why did he ask for me to buy a picture? But finally, she realized that this is her test. So she decided that i got to pass my test. She took down the picture and wrapped it up. She drove all the way to her girlfriend's new apartment, crying the way, all the way. And she said, I knocked the door, tear going down on my face, and said to my girlfriend, here is your nice housewarming gift. And she said, when I left her apartment, the Spirit gave me a remarkable peace. I was filled with a great joy. And the Lord told me, well done, my daughter. You passed the test. She says, the next day when I read my Bible, it became a life. Brother and sister, do you know why? Because you responded to the Spirit. Where are you with this? Are you serious to pass the test? Brother and sister, today, I want to challenge you to develop a meaningful relationship with the Spirit. This is the key to overcome your flesh. So, what God asks us, asks all of us to do? Walk. Don't grieve. Don't quench. Be filled and pass the test. So, brother and sister, today, I would like all of us to really devote ourselves, make up our mind. Every day, we're going to walk with the Spirit. We're going to listen to His voice. You're gonna, we, we're going to read the Bible. We're going we're gonna to pray. We're going to walk with Him in our daily life. And please make sure, don't grieve Him. Don't quench and be filled and pass the test. I would like to pray for you. Let us pray together. Father, we thank so much for 
today's message. We believe that you had a great plan for us. And sometimes we forsake our relationship with the Spirit. But today, we would like to develop our relationship with the Spirit. And we know that this is so important to, to, to overcoming our flesh. And we are ready to obey your command, to walk with you, to walk with the Spirit. Not to grieve the Spirit, not to quench the Spirit, but be filled with the Spirit. And we, we make up our mind to pass every test this week. Help us, be with us, strengthen us. We need your help. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.